Hello students, in this session we will be discussing about the, the wears on the rails and the defects that are occur in the rail section. So to begin with that, first we will be discussing on the rail wear and then we will move on to the defects in rail. So first we will understand what is a rail wear and what are the causes for the rail wear. So you can see here in the picture, so on the head portion, so rail wear occurs especially on the head portion of the rail section. Since the head portion is the one which is in con direct contact with the wheel because of the application of this heavy loaded wheel on a small concentrated area so there are chances that your there will be a metal loss on the surface which is in contact with the wheel okay so that metal the loss of metal because of the friction continuous friction between the uh, steel wheel and the steel head so that we call it as the rail wear so as you can see here the rail wear can occur either on the vertical wear so vertical wear that will occur on the top of the rail section and the rail can also be the lateral wear so lateral wear is nothing but the the wear which occurs on the sides portion of your rail section that we call it as the lateral wear Apart from the lateral wear and the side wear, we have one more uh, wear that can occur at the end. So here the rails runs in some direction. So the rail section will have the particular length. So at the end of each and every rail section, there are chances that the wear will occur. So this we will uh, call it as the end wear. We will look into the what are the various causes uh, which will contribute to the occurrence of the rail wear. So the first cause is the due to the passage of a moving load, the friction between the, uh, there exists a friction between the rail and the wheel section. So because of this friction which is there between the steel wheel and the steel rail, so there will be a, a loss of metal on the top surface, that is the first reason. The second reason that can also be due to the impact of moving load. So the effect of forces of acceleration, deceleration, breaking of wheels and abrasion. So due to the rail and wheel interactions that can also be the cause for the rail wheel. And apart from these two, so there are weather in condition that is the change in temperature, snow and the rain. And also the presence of uh, some of the materials like sand um, that will also contribute to the rail wear. And uh, some of the cases, especially when it comes to the curve, so we can expect this lateral wear. So lateral wear will come to picture only at the mm, curve section, not on the straight section. So that occurs because the more lateral force is exerted on the outer uh, rail because of the centrifugal force that have been developed. Okay, so here the lot of metal of the rail get worn out that will cause the uh, when the whenever there is a worn out uh, section that will cause the loss of metal in the rail section due to the several reasons that we have mentioned. So now uh, because of the uh, loss of metal you should whenever there is a metal loss that should be ensured that the whatever the stresses that exceeds that will be uh, within the permissible values. So if at all if you feel like if I find that the stresses are exceeding the permissible values so the rail section need to be renewal or it can be completely replaced. Okay here the picture here shows you this, so this is a typical rail section without any wear and you can see here there is a sides of the rail section is both the top as well as the side of the rail section has been completely worn out. So this can be the causes or yeah. picture. So you can see here. So this was the original um, rail section. So you can see here both the top side there is a wear. You can see as well as both on the sides. Okay. So if the wear occur on the top or uh, here. So now here next we will move on to the what are the classification of the wells, how you can classify it. So the first classification is based upon the location where the wear is occurring. So now and we can see that the wear is predominant in some of the location likes on sharp curves. So frequently the wear occur on the sharp curves and on the gradients and also approaches to the railway stations where the brakes are frequently applied and in the tunnels and also in the coastal area due to the action of um, breeze the corrosion of the metal takes place and that leads to the wear and also whenever the track is taken on the weak foundation sinking or uh, can uh, sinking of rails can occur due to the heavy loads which gives the uneven surface which will result in the wear 
okay so these are the uh, some of the places where the uh, railway rests predominant the second classification which is of more importance is the based upon the position of the railway so we have already saw that in the first slide okay what were all the various position that can occur on the top or on the sides or at the end of the rail section so now depending upon the position where the wear is occurring so we can classify into the three types so first type is the on the top of the rail head so that we call it as the vertical wear so vertical wear this will occur both on the tangent track tangent track is nothing but the straight track so this can occur both on this tangent track as well as on the curves the second position wherever rail wear can expect it is on the rail sides of the rail head that is nothing but the lateral lateral wear so if it is a rail section if it the wear occur on these sides so top it will call that as the vertical wear if the wear occur at these sides we call this as the lateral wear so your rain run longitudinally and if that occur at the end portion that we call it as the rail um, wear on the ends of the rail so that can also be called as the battering of the rail end so we will discuss in detail what are the reasons for the occurrence of the various uh, type of rail wear on the a different position and how we can it can be rectified that will be discussed further the first type of the wear what you can see is the wear on the top of the rail so that will occur on the top and top end of your rail section okay so that, so that we wear on the top of the rail so that can also be called as the vertical wear so this vertical wear can occur on both on the tangent track as well as on the curve so tangent track is nothing but the straight track so straight track can also be called as the tangent track okay so now here uh, what are the reasons uh, which are which is causing the wear on the rail section of the tangent tracks and the curve section that will be discussed the first one reason is the due to the flow of metal so why the metal will flow so because here a uh, heavy wheel load is acting on a very small concentrated area so you know that all the rails will carry a very high heavy loads okay so that load all the loads will be transferred to the small area means the, the you might have seen the wheels okay so wheels the contact area between the wheel and the rail section is very very small okay? because of this small area which will produce the largest stresses and when the stresses exceed the elastic limit of the material so we can see the flow of metal so it will have the metal start flowing in the direction of the movement of the rail section and that will create the formation of burst will be formed so what that is the one reason for the occurrence of the wear and also the because of the axle load the impact of the reoccurring impact of the heavy axle load that can also causes the wear on the top of the rail and also the wherever there is a frequent application of the brake especially on the gradient so there are chances that the rail, rail wear occurs on the top and also the abrasion of the rolling wheels and um, because of the abrasion the generally the rail top of your rail get generally worn out and uh, sometimes in the tunnel so we will the uh, tunnel source the sand will be used spread on the rail section to produce a friction in case of the dampness if the tunnels are in very damp to impart the friction between the rail and the rail and the wheel section the sand will be used so be, the presence of the sand that may cause the uh, uh, it will cause the grinding action of the sand particles so ultimately the rail gives rise to the wear and also due to the change in the gradient that can lead to the uh, frequent applications of the brake so that may leads to the rail wear and um, the other the last reason is the corrosion of the rail action rail by the action of the c brake so that may also give rise to the wear on the top of the rail so these are the some of the reasons why the wear occurs on the tangent track but when it comes to the curves the what is the reasons which is making your railway um, um railway it is quietly different compared to the tangent track so here uh, on the curve uh, there is a due to the free, uh, slipping and skidding of the wheel occurs and which may leads to the wear and also there is a effect of the centrifugal force if the improper super elevation is provided the load on the one rail is greater than the other rail so resulting in the more 
where due to the heavy concentration of the stresses so these are the reasons picture here will shows you the how the rail vent occurs on the side where so you can see here so both the sections should be symmetrical without any wear but you can see on the sides so completely the there is a metal loss here on the side so this is how the rail vent call it as the picture so here uh, metal will flow and the metal will be accumulated on the one places so that accumulation of the metal at one particular concentrated place we will call it as the burr okay so this whatever the burr it will form that get later chipped off because of the moving wheel flange so why the rail wear is occurring so this picture here will shows you the how where rail wear occur the first picture here this picture will give you the or the vertical wear on the tangent tracks on the straight stretch how the rail wear occur and other two diagrams so that will give rise to uh, gives you the uh, on the curves how the rail gets wear so on the uh, railway track so we will have the two rails one is the on the curve so whatever you have it at the inner side so this will be the inner rail wear and uh, whatever the rail wear occurs on the outer side of your rail that we call it as the outer rail wear okay so now here the inner side you can only see the the rail gets wear on the only on the top but on the one which is on the outer rail so there is a more concentration of load because of the centrifugal force that has been developed so as a result of it so uh, wear occur on the outer line wear occur both on the top side as well as on the sides as you can see here in the picture so outer rail is subjected to the both the vertical wear as well as the lateral wear whereas your inner rail is subjected to the only the vertical wear or the wear on the top of your rail so now here let's look into it. so how to uh, what, what is the next type of the rail wear the next wear is the rail on the ends of the rail so you can see here this is the first rail section and uh, that ends at here somewhere at this point and from here the second where uh, second rail section start so now whenever they are connect the two rails with the help of the fish plate and fish pool a sufficient joint will be provided for the expansion so now uh, when the um, uh, this wear on the rail and occurs due to the combined action of the both static pressure as well as the impact blows so whenever the rail moves from the one section to the other section there will be a sudden jump over this gap so which will give rise to the blow to the end of the rail but because of the frequent application of such static pressure as well as the impact load what will happen the ends here that get battered so you can see here the ends get battered here so resulting as a result of it when the ends get battered that will results in the rough riding tra uh, track and also the whatever the ballast packing we have uh, below it that also get loosens and it, that even disturbs the uh, railway sleepers of the wear so now we'll look into the what are the reasons that is causing the rail wear at the end so the first reason here is to uh, because of the loose fish plate and fish pole so we will use the fish plates and two fish poles to connect between the two different rail section so whenever these loose fish plates and fish poles are not properly tightened that may leads to the cause of the heavy impact on these rail ends and also due to the heavy loads and the large opening so if this gap what you have provided is more so that also causes the greater impact and also if these two rail sections are at the different level so that may give rise to the rail at the wear ends and also the bad condition of the vehicle springs and the poor maintenance of the track so can cause the wear on the rail end section ultimately whenever there is a rail get battered here at the end portion so that will results in the bad poor riding surface of the other position where you can expect the rail wear which is a very prominent uh, in the especially on the curve is the rail on the sides of the rail head this type of the wear is more disruptive in nature when you compare to the first two types so now we'll look into the what are the various reasons that was causing the rail wear to occur on the sides so first reason at the curve so there will be a greater thrust on the inner rail when the turn uh, train moves at the higher speed more than the equilibrium speed so and also the due to the rigidity of the wheel bases so there can be a slipping and skidding of the wheels at the curve so the main reason is because of the effect of centrifugal force so whenever the super elevation is not provided properly that's 
may lead to the um, that will leads to the higher concentration of stresses on one rail with respect to the other that will causes the rail on so now whenever occur, rail wears occurs we have a allowable limits for the wear so in india the prescribed limit is 5% of the total weight of the rail section what is this weight weight of 5% wear so now in in india we can either use 45 kg per meter or 50 uh, 52 kg per meter rail weight or the 60 kg per meter of rail wear so now when after the metal has been worn out so now when you weigh the metal so so it should not be more uh, loss of weight should not be more than the five percentage of the total weight so how do you get 16 to 100 so um, 60 uh, into 5 divided by 100 so that will be equivalent to uh, sorry 3 kg okay so after the rail has been worn out when you weigh it so there should be if the uh, rail section has the weight of the rail section has reduced more than 3 kg so such rail section has to be replaced with the new rail section or that uh, wear has to be rectified so now we'll discuss what are the various methods to reduce the rail wear so we know that the limits of the rail wear the rail wear should not be more than the five percentage of the to, uh, total weight of the rail section so whenever you find the rail as exceeds the prescribed limits that rail must be replaced so now the some of the methods with which you can minimize the rail wear is the by the with the use of the special alloy steel so that can reduce the rail wear making the uh, steel what you have used the stronger steel so that will reduce the wear and also the regular fit tightening of the fish plates and the fish poles and the packing of the ballast is necessary to reduce the rail wear at the ends so the main reason why the wear is occurring at the end is because of the um, loose fish plates on the fish board so frequent maintenance is required with respect to that and also reduction in the number of joints so by providing the welding and also when you provide the welding so what that can minimize the reduction and uh, reducing the wear at the ends of the the chances of battering of the rail ends can be reduced by reducing the number of joints by welding so and also reduce there should be a reduction in the width of the gap and use of long bed rail rail etc that will reduce the wear okay especially so this is with respect to the end of the end the way that will occur at the end of the rail section and also the welding and dehogging of the batter in, battered head in time will also reduces the wear and we need to have properly maintain the track and with respect to the special attention has to be given to the joints and the gauges has to be maintained properly and correct adhesing of the sleepers or use of the bearing plates need to be provided to reduce the uh, action of the wear and uh, the lubricating act, uh, gauge lubricating oil is used on the gauge phase on the outer rail on the car so where the occurrence of the chances of occurrence of the wear is more and also the the curves interchange the inner and outer rails frequently so that there is a change of phase at the curves and the last option is the application of the heavy mineral oil in case especially in the case of uh, corrosion of the rail is expected under the adverse action of the atmospheric condition so apply the heavy mineral rail so we can reduce the rail so with this method we can um, reduce the rail wear as to some action but all the you cannot completely eliminate the rail wear so each and every rail section which is subjected to the moving load so it will obviously uh, wear can be expected okay so we cannot completely avoid the railway but with the 